Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm afraid I don't have any such interest in uh, consumption update as gin, um, but I haven't noticed any marked increase in demand for antidepressants since June 23rd, so uh, if that helps uh, to reassure you. Um, I just thought I would make a few general comments, really building on uh, what Charlie's introduced, and, and to really emphasize, I think, um, at least from our perspective, some of the agenda that we hope government ought to start to think and embrace. And actually, in the same spirit of inviting other members of the business community to really join in with some of that appeal over the next weeks and months, because we are in an interesting period where the agenda is a little bit blank right now. Uh, and we can look at that and say that's not a great situation, or we can look at that as a clear opportunity to try and get into uh, potential new leaders of uh, the country, people who are going to be determining where the focus points are going to be, some ideas which we believe can make a big difference. One of those is clearly what Charlie's just described to you in terms of the idea to put more emphasis behind productivity. I'll come to that in a second. There's no point rate wasting a good crisis, and it seems to me that the one thing that's absolutely sure after June 23rd is the future economic strategy of the UK cannot possibly be the same as it was before June the 23rd. Up until June the 23rd, we'd spent a generation really preoccupied with Europe as our primary trading partners, and they are, or several of those countries, are indeed our primary trading partners. But that has to change now. There has to be a realization that it has to be Europe plus other parts of the world, at a level we haven't seen before. So what does government really need to do? It has to reflect very hard, probably not just on its strategic focus, but also on how it organizes and how it chooses to signal it's disingenuous to occupy almost 50% of GDP and pretend you have nothing to do with the marketplace. Almost every business in Britain either trades with or is influenced by the government of the UK. And therefore, the signals that the UK government sends are extraordinarily important to the behavior of the whole economy, whether that happens to be owned by the government or in the private sector. And that's something which, as we move into this new era of post 23rd of June, that has to be reflected in actual changes in decision making. I just want to pull out maybe two or three themes, and I'm not for a second standing here pretending that these are the answers, not at all. But I am going to be reasonably provocative because I think it's time that business was provocative and business started to think hard about what we really want government to do on our behalf. I'm 100% with Charlie. What we need is business-led economy supported by government. What we don't need is a government which inter intervenes and tries to do everything for us. But to get that, we need to have a very clear ask, and we need to have a very clear view as business. I'm very strongly of the opinion that that can't just be big business. It has to be large, medium, and actually, most importantly, small business. The quickest way to drive employment in any economy is to get every company which employs one person to employ two. That's the biggest driver of growth in any economy. And it emphasizes again why this has to be a whole business proposition, not simply a single tier. So let me just start with, for what it's worth, my straw man of provocation. Firstly, the government needs to focus much more than it ever has done on economic growth and how to deliver it. We need to focus on probably three core things to get right as a country over the next decade. The first is obvious, which is a redefinition of our economic relationship with the European Union. And I'm not going to say any more about that because that's so obvious and it's so front and center that we know that that's going to be addressed one way or the other. The second two, though, are equally important in my opinion. The first is productivity improvement and exactly why the work that Charlie has led is so critical and timely at this point. It really is strange, and that's probably a super polite word for it, that we have static productivity since 2008 in the UK. And we really, really have to look ourselves in the mirror and ask why is that the case? The reason why it's even more critical now is because while there are some beneficial effects of a fall in the value of the currency, one for sure effect of the fall in the value of the currency is that we will start to import inflation going forward. And we will need to drive productivity growth to offset or partially offset some of that effect. If we were able to do that, then we can turn the drop in currency to being a straightforward positive for the economy and not good on the one hand and bad on the other. So there is an extra urgency to try and drive that improvement in productivity. 
I'd also join Charlie's view in if we're ever going to move wage growth in the UK for the large numbers of the population who have not seen much wage growth, we have to drive productivity. And it seems to me that if we can't drive wage growth for the vast majority of people, then the whole construct of business becomes very challenged in society. So productivity must be a core focus of the government. And the third area is exports. I think even more shockingly than the lack of growth in productivity since 2008 is that the value and volume of UK exports since 2011 is static. And while, yes, probably a drop in the currency will stimulate growth of exports, the lessons from 2008-9 is that that stimulus only lasted for two years. And there was a temporary bump or, or a bump in the curve of exports, but it wasn't sustained, and it went back to a relatively uh, flat curve. And so I think it's unlikely and probably overly complacent to sit here and say simply because the currency is dropping, we're going to have an export boom. Very unlikely. We may very well have a bounce in 17 and half, first half 18. It seems less likely to me it will sustain through 19, 20, 21. So what are we going to do to drive those exports? And it seems that both on the productivity subject and the export subject, when we look at the recent past, 08 through 2016, we haven't done either of those two things well. That says to me we have to change. We have to do things differently. We have to figure this out. Again, why I fully support Charlie's initiative on productivity. So for government, a few exam questions. Should we have a cabinet minister for productivity? Should we have a cabinet minister for export? Should, do we feel that as a country we have the right focus on what really drives economic growth for the benefit of the whole of the nation? Is biz able to do what we ask it to do? Biz, and I was the lead director of biz for three years. I spent three years working inside that organization. I can tell you it has many of the very best civil servants in the UK but it probably also has the most objectives of any department, ranging from the meteorological department all the way through to counting GDP. Is that really what we want? Is that what you would do in your, com in your company if you had an existential threat or a need to fundamentally reposition your business for success in the long run? Wouldn't you focus? And that's where I think government really... As we see new leadership come in, government needs to think very hard about whether the old organizational structures, the old rules, and the old lack of focus are sufficient to address the change in circumstances that we now face. I think Catherine Raines at UKTI has done a phenomenal job of driving positive change at UKTI. But when you look at the size of UKTI compared to its global competitors, when you look at our ability to put the very best talent in Britain into that organization to represent us. She's almost working with a hand tied behind her back. And we need to decide if exports are really the way to drive this economy, and I for one believe that absolutely, then we have to put our money where our mouth is as a country and really invest behind organizations like UKTI and give them the strength to go out and really compete against groups like the Singaporean EDB, who frankly are in a different league of capability. And we need to match, if not exceed that, in the way that we think going forward. We need to think about what our measures are. We need to think about how we drive skills improvement in this country. We need to think about how we transform our adoption of digital technologies. It's even more shocking, isn't it, to think that we haven't driven productivity growth in an era where digital adoption has been rapid? What on earth have we been doing? That seems to me to be the tough questions as business we need to think about. What I would love to invite you to do is to certainly reflect on my straw man, and I'm more than open to the notion that I'm wrong or these aren't the right questions and there are different or better questions, but I think we have such a great opportunity in the next six weeks to start to voice what British business thinks British business needs to be competitive globally post June 23rd. And I honestly think whether we employ one person, 500 people, or in my case 110,000 people, we have an obligation to speak up. We have an obligation to help the people who are now in charge of trying to plot a course for us decide where the focus points are, 
what the objectives need to be, what the structures need to be, and who the talent need to be to drive a super successful economy for the UK. And that has to be the opportunity we try and build from the changing circumstances we now deal with. Thank you very much for your attention this afternoon. And again, I hope very much you'll take up Charlie's invitation to swing behind the question of really how good is your business? We're using it at GSK. I hope you'll all think about using it at your business as well. Thank you very much.